Well, <clears throat> I'm sure many of you remember this. <laughs> and all the frustrations I had trying to get this thing to work. Um, and, um, well, interestingly, the two videos I did on this uh, Chinese hitting this engine from Banggood um, were extremely popular. I had many, many views and more comments on those two videos than, than any of my other videos. And many of you who bought this engine suffered the same frustrations that I did in, in trying to get it to, to run, you know, lack of instructions and so forth. And, <clears throat> and um, questions about how the earth lead should be um, attached. Should it be attached to the battery negative or should it be attached to the uh, ignition box, so forth and so on. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, when the opportunity arose uh, to uh, revisit this, I thought, well, why not? So why are we back with this Chinese hit and miss engine? Well, the reason we are <clears throat> is because of this. Now this apparently is supposedly <coughs> the updated version of the first engine. Now this one comes <coughs> already mounted on a box which contains the ignition unit um, and a battery box. Uh, whereas with this one, you had to wire it up yourself and get your own battery box. So this is supposed to be uh, sort of like a Mark II version, basically. As far as I can tell, <coughs> it's, it's pretty much identical to, to, the, to the first one. Um, there are a few changes. The um, uh, the mechanism is slightly different. The uh, the hit and miss mechanism is slightly different, um, and this uh, reservoir at the top uh, is it has a bigger hole in it, and also it has a, there is a sleeve in the uh, around the cylinder which allows the cooling water if you put cooling water in there to, to completely surround the cylinder. So it should be better cooled. Also, it has a it comes with the fuel tank already mounted, whereas the other one, the, the fuel tank was not mounted. You had to mount that yourself. Um, <coughs> as you can see, this is literally, I've just taken this out of the box, so this is exactly as it came. So you can see that the, uh, the, the fuel pipe that's on there is all kinked anyway, so that isn't gonna work. Um, but uh, no, I, I thought, well, you know, I, this is a lovely little engine when it runs, but it's a right bugger to get running. So I thought when this one came up, um, you can buy these from Banggood, or you can get them on eBay. And I actually got, got a good deal on mine on eBay. So um, I thought, um, yeah, we'll have a look at this one. So um, the very first thing we're gonna do uh, is uh, have a close look at it and then I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna have a look inside the actual uh, box underneath, which contains the ignition unit and battery box. Okay, well, here it is in all its glory. As I said, it's very, very similar at first look. Um, to the blue one, except that it already has the little wooden box containing, <coughs> excuse me, the ignition module and the battery box. Um, but I thought it was quite amusing that the, although it comes with the fuel tank already attached on mine, the, this pipe's all kinked. So, <laughs> you know, that's gonna need to be sorted out before we can actually get this thing running. Um, but um, one of the nice things about this one, of course, is because the fuel tank is already mounted, um, you haven't got to worry about whether it's in the right position relative to the, the carburetor. Um, so, um, and what is interesting is, as you can see from this, that the, the outlet from the fuel tank and the inlet to the carburetor are more or less at the same height. So that's that's an inter interesting telltale sign there. Um, but uh, yeah, um, there's no indication on here as to uh, which position for the switch is on, um, but we'll be able to find that out when we whip the back off and have a look at it. Um, but um, yeah, same same high quality engineering and the, the machining and uh, of this and these castings is is, is superb. It's, it's it's very very nicely made. It's, you know, no no doubt about that. Right, let's have a look um, underneath at the battery container. Right, so I flipped it over and basically you just slide this out. Looks basically like an old school pencil box, really, and then inside there you have the uh, battery holder for three AA cells and the ignition module. Now, I'm gonna pull this out of the way here. You can see um, here, you can see the, the switch. So looking at that switch, then when the switch is towards the outer edge of the box, that's on. 
And here we have the earth strap, which disappears into the ignition module. Now, the interesting thing about this ignition module compared to the other one is that this is um, plastic and it's potted. So there's no way you can get into, the, into that at all. It's completely impossible to get inside that. However, I have poked around with the multimeter and on this one, the earth strap, whoops, this earth strap, is connected to that battery negative. So on this one, the earth strap is definitely connected to the battery negative. So that hopefully sorts that out, that, that particular question. Um, and um, I'm gonna go back onto my blue engine and reconnect the earth strap from the chassis to the battery negative. Whereas at the moment it's connected to the case of the ignition unit, which of course on the blue one is metal. Okay, well, I put some batteries in it. I put some fuel in it. <clears throat> now, interestingly enough, um, it did come with a spare piece of fuel pipe. So uh, they're obviously expecting the bit on there originally, which is this bit, um, to be all kinked and useless. So I've replaced that. And this one does come, believe it or not, with some instructions. A whole A4 sheet of instructions in uh, appallingly uh, bad, uh, Chinese converted to English. Um, I'll give an example of <laughs> how how this uh, how this reads. Um, engine startup steps: one, open the bottom plate to check the wiring of the engine. Connect the fuel tank pipe and install the three number five batteries to close the bottom plate. Fill the tank with gasoline. When filling is completed, make sure there is no air in the oil pipe. On the right side of the engine, installation of the flying hammer position, slowly turn counterclockwise by hand to buy more than one turn. Its roll can make the mixed gasoline fully enter the cylinder. Turn on power switch and turn the flywheel to start the engine counterclockwise on the right side of the engine. So, I suppose the next question is, let's see if this thing will actually run. Right, let's have a go at starting this thing. <clears throat> Well, that was a hell of a lot easier to start than the blue one has ever been. So that's a vast improvement. Right, well, what I think we'll do is, just to make sure that wasn't a fluke, I'm going to turn it off and we'll leave it for a minute and then we'll try and start it again because that was almost way too easy. Um, how are we doing temperature-wise? Yeah, it's barely even warm. I've got water in the reservoir here and, and, and definitely the cooling is better on this model because it, it goes around the, 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 the jacket, you know, the cylinder. But... Um, yeah, that was that was extremely easy compared to um, you know the, the other one. So um, okay, let's try it again. Well, that's incredible. Just one turn, you know.
Okay, so there you go. <laughs> That's that one running. And it certainly, it was difficult, but a lot easier to get running than the, than the, first, the first one. Uh, and obviously, it, and, all, and, it, and it actually runs, um, you know, for, for a lot longer than the, than, it, than I ever got the blue one to run for. So, you know, that, that in itself is, is an improvement. Um, but um, yeah, uh, it's as nicely machined as the, as the, as the, as the first one was, um, and definitely easier, easier to get running. Um, it's a right pig to try and fill the fuel tank. As I said, I ended up using a syringe in the end to get petrol in there because there's no other way of doing it. And it's very small and only holds about, I don't know, 20 milliliters, something like that. Uh, um, and, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, I, I put cold water in here and the engine is really, for the amount of time I've been running it, it's hardly warm. So that's the cooling, obviously it works better. But again, there's no, there's no way of lubricating the cylinder unless you stick oil directly in there. You know, there's, there's no lubrication in, in there for it. Um, uh, I did lube up the bearings and all the rest of it uh, before, uh, I, I, before I ran it. But um, yeah, so there we go. That's the Mark II version of the Banggood hit and miss engine. I'll put a link in the description to where you can buy one of these on Banggood. Um, but if you search on eBay, they are also on eBay as well. Uh, and you might get a better deal on eBay if you want one. Um, so what have we learned from this? Well, um, huh. basically the most important thing is that on this engine, the earth strap, which goes to the chassis of the engine, goes to the negative terminal of the battery box. So that's um, uh, something that we that I'm going to try on the blue engine and see whether that makes it run better. Um, but anyway, there you go. That's it for now. The the Mark II version of the Chinese Banggood hit and miss engine. So I hope that was helpful to anyone who's got one or is thinking of getting one. Um, and uh, thanks very much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>